Well, hey there, hi there, ho there, it is me, Anxious Cynic, back again with another Bidebater tutorial. So this is something I've gotten asked about numerous times over like a year or more, and I never really figured out the best way to go about covering it, but I finally figured out a way to kind of combine these concepts together for a tutorial. So today we're going to talk about how to do some more natural movements in Minimator. So natural movement in Minimator is kind of difficult to do due to the way keyframes are currently handled. So, you know, it's not really going to compare as well to something like Blender or Cinema 4D or whatever, but we can get pretty close, kind of close with the right uh, principles in mind for how to animate your character. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to go ahead and select everything. I'm going to get a keyframe here and visible, visible, and that way we get those keyframes set for every part here. So basically I'm just going to do like a, a a concept here of like a character leaning. So you pretty much have a basic way that most people animate and let's say we want to have him lean over the course of one second which would be 30 keyframes here as you can see there one second and I'm just gonna select the body and I can have him lean over like this let's just say he's gonna lean negative 20 and then now that we have the new bends I can have him even bend a bit like this let's just say like negative 15 and we're good to go there I'm just gonna take the arm kind of have it hang like this, we'll make that one do like that. Maybe even lean the head a bit. Something like that, so we got a good old lean there. And what you would do is you'll just have this happen. And he leans. And that's really boring and it's not realistic and the whole character just kind of leans all together. Now of course you could add keyframes to this. So our transitions, keyframe transitions. <laughs> Click on that one right there. And then you get a little bit better movement maybe that smooth so it doesn't look too bad and of course this is a style you can totally animate this way there's nothing wrong with it but if you want to make it look more natural maybe more realistic things like that then you're gonna want to do a little more work so I'm just gonna go ahead and change this back to Lanier and what we're gonna do is try to have the character react naturally which is like you want there to be kind of a chain of events. So imagine the character has a spine. Basically the, the pivot is going to begin at the hip and then it'll kind of work its way up the spine and then to the head, kind of in a linear chain of events. So what we would do maybe is go about, we're just gonna divide this into, you know, thirds basically for the sake of the tutorial. And maybe right now I don't want his been to be happening so I'm just gonna go ahead and cancel that out and that'll put another keyframe there now again this is why my animator is kind of difficult to work with because all that information is kept in these same keyframes so you won't get the natural movement that you really want but this is as close as we can get without doing too much craziness so we're gonna have that happen there and then here we're gonna put another keyframe and actually what I may want to do is add more movement to this but just for the sake of kind of explaining how this might work, we're gonna leave it like this for now. And maybe right around here, I'm gonna have the head be straight. So what you'll get with this is like that gradual movement. Like he begins to tilt, whoops, wrong thing there. He begins to tilt, then we start to get the bend and then we get the head moving. So as you can see, like the way this is happening, these things are kind of linking up in a chain and having these events occur over time. Now you can see the arm is still kind of like doing its thing over there, but you can apply these principles to that as well if you want to. So you can get a movement like that and that's a little bit better. We can add some transitions here. So for this one, let's have it do an ease in. And then when he gets to the bend, we'll have it do say uh, ease out and gets a little bit smoother maybe depending on how you line all those keyframes up and for the head here we can do the same thing we can even just put that one there and then for the first one here we'll do that one there and I'm just using the ease in and ease out signs you can use whichever one you want depending on the speed of your animation and the style and all that good stuff so as you can see there it's a bit more natural but another thing we can do we can even improve on this which is i'm going to add another keyframe here which is what i was sort of referencing earlier and instead of having that happen i'm just going to go zero there and then on this one we're going to give him a little bit of inertia so instead of having him just suddenly start to bend we're going to have him kind of go back a little ways let's go ahead and put about four degrees on that and we need to move 
this arm because it's kind of clipping just for the sake of detail and we might do the same thing for the head here so we're going to go over here with the head so it'll be straight there and we maybe offset this a bit because we don't want it to all start moving at the same time unfortunately we can't do that with the bend for the body but we can at least do it with the head it's going to have this head go back a ways maybe put about five degrees let's offset this here offset this here because we don't want it all to kind of line up too much and let's see let's check our keyframe transitions let's ease out and that's the ease in we can actually maybe just make this one linear let's try that and we'll do the same for this just make that middle one linear this one's going to be ease out this one's going to be ease in looks like everything is in order so we'll watch that back So you see you get this kind of like movement here where the body begins to go one way which makes the upper body kind of tilt back the other way and then it catches up and moves over just like so. We could technically if we wanted to probably just get rid of this keyframe here and go ahead and add that ease out transition like so. Just like that and you still kind of get the same effect but it kind of depends on you know how you're animating what you want to do how many keyframes you want to use you may not even want to use transitions you may want to do all linear and have it happen faster and stuff like we can move this back move this back like technically uh the faster you make things go the smoother it can look depending on the style of your animation so that's another thing to keep in mind sometimes having things move super slow doesn't mean super smooth it means it looks to deliver it in artificial so you can do like that and then of course you know like for the head for instance we could do it for the whole body which I probably normally would if I were doing it this way but once it comes over you can kind of have it go a little bit further than you would want it to and then do like a little bounce back let's just say like 15 or something like that so you see there the head kind of bounces back up that's obviously a little bit too slow let's move that keyframe in let's see what we got here and see a little bounce on the head there that gives it even more kind of a natural weightiness to it and again you can do the same thing for the body let's just have that come back to say negative 12 whoops and negative 18 just a little bit of a bounce on the uh, the body as well as the head you can see there what I would probably do here is actually have that happen a little bit differently you want to keep that inertia going with the the head and the body this obviously isn't perfect but hopefully you guys get the idea here with the principles that I'm talking about with the way you would use these keyframes and these movements to create these chain of events with the movement you can see there it gives it that bounce a little bit of inertia with all the, the parts and everything and you know this doesn't look the best i would spend much more time on this if i was trying to get it perfect but you get the concept and you can see just how much of a difference there is there with that with all those keyframes versus the original where you just leaned over and that was it so of course like with all this movement you would want the arms to be simulating the same thing you can do all that stuff have the arms kind of move in and back and all this kind of stuff like it's so like you might would want and uh you have to do some more work on that but just the more movement the more kind of loose and organic the, the movements are and the body parts appear to be the more natural it's going to look so in addition to the natural movements like we just discussed, something I've always gotten asked is how to make a character look like they're breathing. And I kind of felt like this was a relevant tutorial to cover that because I didn't think it deserved its own tutorial. So what we're basically going to do here is just kind of a simple effect of like how I might would go about making a character breathe. There's probably numerous ways, but this is like probably, in my opinion, the, the quick and easy way to do it. So let's just say I'm going to have him kind of do a, a slow and gradual breathing. So I'm just going to go here to the body, we're going to go to scale, and I'm just going to scale it up like slightly, like 1.1, 1 .1, or wait, 1.01, 1 .01, maybe 0 0.15, so you get this slight movement there. That even might be too much, let's just go like just 1.01 .01 even. 
So you have that movement there, right? And uh, basically, you can complete that action. Let's just say he's gonna exhale faster, so we have 20 keyframes and then only 15 for the exhale. And you can see there, he does that. And then we can even add some transitions to that. Let's go ahead and just give that ease in and ease out, see what that does. Something like that, not too terrible. Of course, if we wanted to, we don't have to have those transitions. You could just make it all linear. Doesn't look too terrible. Really, again, it depends on how you want things to look. However, when we do this, we also have like the arms are getting bigger and the head's getting bigger and things like that. So what we can do is just go ahead and create these keyframes here. And since that's going up like 0.01, Let's have them come down like 0.99 maybe. Let's see what that does. So as you can see, like the arms and the head kind of shrink up a bit. They don't get as big. It's just kind of moving with the body a bit and kind of maybe even providing a bit more movement overall because things are more varied. So we get like a breathing motion there. And then we can also, of course, copy the originals over here and put them there so that they go up and come down. And that's just kind of a basic breathing motion there. And uh, let's just say we want to add even more to that. So how about when he inhales, we'll take the body and maybe we'll give him a very slight lean backwards. And again, it depends on what kind of breathing you're wanting to do, how how deep he's supposed to be breathing and all that good stuff, but just do like negative two on the head, negative one on the body. Maybe we'll even give the body a slight bend on the X there. And you get that movement right there, just like so, man. Let's go ahead and throw a transition on that and see how we can make it look. So this is kind of like more of a heavier breathing with the body moving and things like that. So those are things you want to take into consideration. Maybe your character just got done with a run and he's like out of breath and trying to catch his breath. This may not be how you want him to look if he's just like breathing normally. Obviously that looks a bit labored. So it all depends on what your scene is, what the character is being depicted doing. But just using that like scale, having the body kind of move, things like that can be a big help to just giving that really subtle really easy effect and uh yeah let's see if we go ahead and loop this he's hyperventilating oh no somebody get him a bag so let's go ahead and just uh take away some of this we're gonna make the head not lean back and we're gonna take this bend out and then give this like just a negative one on the uh the little bend on the body there and uh that might give it just a bit more subtle breathing. As you can see, you can play with all these different things. Use the bend, use the, the tilt, the rotation, whatever it is that gives you the effect that you want. Just play around with it and see what different styles you can come up with. But yeah, that's a pretty easy way to just make kind of idle breathing motions there. Just using basically scale for the most part. Now again, of course, it depends on how realistic you want your animation to look, how what your style is and all that good stuff. But this is just a really easy way to get the visual effect that you may be after. And yeah, pretty easy stuff, guys. So I hope that was helpful. I hope those two tips help you in your animation journey. As always, if they did, feel free to hit that like button, comment, let me know what you think. Support me on Patreon if you want to help me keep doing these videos and stuff. And that's it. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.